Hi, my name is Charles Sterling. I'm a senior program manager at Microsoft. I'm on the Visual Studio team. I focus on feedback and community enablement, so going out and making sure that your voices are heard inside of our product. Um, so I was actually speaking on Visual Studio, my product, and the primary messages that um, I was delivering to the attendees here was how we're kind of changing focus from delivering features to actually going out and enabling them in their workflows, taking a look at how these people work and actually enable those scenarios. Um, it's quite a bit, uh, it's, it's a big change for Microsoft and it's a lot of fun for me as a feedback person because the um, attendees are happier, the developers really like it, um, and they're getting, they're getting products that really work for them. We really have changed focus from going out and pushing a marketing message for the sake of sales to actually delivering value to the end user, going out and taking a look at what's, how can we supply value to them and knowing that that's going to actually do more for our sales than actually the best ads and the best um, collateral that we could have created. So while I hadn't thought of it, I think you're spot on. Uh, so the biggest one is we ran feature teams and they built features and it wasn't until we went to beta that we found out that some of these features didn't work well together to being scenario based. The entire team goes out and thinks about how do, how do people are going to use the tools and what are they going to use them for and how, what, are they going to, what are they going to deliver as a result of the tools and then creating a set of experiences throughout that pathway and then building the features that light up those um, experiences. So it used to be feature was our our tier one or our thing that we built, and now it's actually enablement of scenarios. And we actually spent lots and lots of money and we require every person that's in the developer division to go through training on scenario-based engineering. Um, so there's lots of changes. It's kind of a fun time to be working at Microsoft. So at the same time we're focusing from features to scenarios, we've also actually changed from a traditional waterfall sort of approach. I don't know if that ever was true, but we're clearly doing agile development now at Microsoft. And we've, I don't know if we're one of the largest companies, but we are a big company to be doing agile development. And our project managers really had to come, to come to grips with the fact that they may not have all the data because, again, it's from sprint to sprint what you're going to work on next. So again, it's a pretty exciting time. Um, again, giving out these new features and letting the people look at it and say, this is exactly what we asked for. It's, it's very cool. Oh, you know, actually, one thing that I, I, I didn't know that I, I would have seen, but the quality of the product has actually increased quite a bit. I had talked about the fact that we built features and we got them all the way to beta before we figured out that they didn't work well together. So I, the fact that we're, we're building these from the word go to actually work together means that the quality is actually quite a bit better. Um, in previous versions of Visual Studio, I've been working at Microsoft for a long time. Um, you know, in the beta one, you expected things to not work and not hang together. There would be certain things that just would not work together. And in my space for these betas now, that's not the case. Um, I am finding that the scenarios work all the way from end to end. Now there may be features that are missing, but the scenario hung together. And that's again, uh, intentional. So the quality of the code is, is much higher than I would have expected as a result of these changes where we weren't driving quality per se. So not being a project manager, I'm not the best person to ask because they have all kinds of heuristics about reactivations, um, the number of code per lines of code, number of uh, bugs per feature is actually another one. Um, now for me, it's I actually work on the feedback um, tools and channels. It's the amount of feedback that we're getting and the severity of those. So um, we're still getting the same volume of feedback as we get in previous versions, and I think that has to do with the fact that the same number of people are active and they want to express their opinions, but the things that they're asking for are now less about the tone of it's broken and it doesn't work, and much more about the tone of, hey, could you add this, or could you let it enable it to do this as well? So we're seeing a big change in the, the requests from a it's not working, it's broken, to can you get it to do this as well? So again, um, it's, I guess maybe that's a, a, a downside of actually being scenario based is that if you pick one pathway, it may not solve the other pathway. If you just do build features that are generic, 
It may do all kinds of other pathways, maybe. Is it important that other development teams go to scenario based with personas? I, I don't know. I, I, it works for us. I, just because our solutions work for us doesn't mean they're going to work for other people. But you asked an important question. What do I think is probably the, one of the more important areas for people to focus on? It's got to be the user experience. Um, or, and a couple with that value back to the user. So you could actually have lots and lots of value, but also needs to be something that they enjoy doing. Um, so you see products like Xbox being used for things that have nothing to do with games. That's because people just simply enjoy watching movies with that sort of interface versus a personal PC. We had Media Center for how long? And it was always this, do I really want to actually use that in my living room? Xbox is never a question. So I think going out and making the richest experience possible as long as it adds the value. And the reason I, I, I say it in that way is because they want to solve a problem. People want to solve problems. Like, for instance, I'm a fisherman, maybe I want to keep track of my fish, fishing or my catches. Lots of people could go out and have the exact same database with data entry and editing, uh, uh, publishing to the web, spell checking. But the one that I probably actually end up using again and again is the one that's just more fun to interact with. And you'll see that with Visual Studio. You see that with uh, Team Foundation Server. One of the biggest scenarios of Team Foundation Server is create raving fans. I swear to God, that is one of our scenarios. And we want to make it as absolute, as a pleasurable experience as possible. A lot of the demos I did were just about making it more fun and more enjoyable to use to get the exact same value. I don't know that the value's been increased. Well, that's not true. The, the value's definitely been increased. But one of our entire scenarios was to increase the user experience, not just the value. Again, am I delivering value to my customer? Am I focusing on that? And the second one is, is it as rich and immersive as I possibly can make it within the time constraints? Because obviously, you know, rewriting everything in DirectX and making it look like an Xbox game would be great. That's not the reality. So within the time constraints, did I deliver as much value and as rich an experience as I could? And this is why you're seeing, you know, a lot of the Windows 8 applications coming out have this very rich, warm feeling as you're interacting with them. Um, the Euro Cup, again, it, that you saw the demo this morning, it was something that you wanted to look at. You wanted to click on and say, I want to do that vote. Um, so, I think somebody could have easily had done that application in a much more utilitarian way, and it wouldn't have been nearly as compelling.